In section two, Septimus, Rhetia, and others observe London, of Mrs. Dalloway, the London citizens near the flower shop hear the explosion of the motor car and spread rumors about whose car it is. One bystander jokes that it's the prime minister's car. Nearby, Septimus Warren Smith overhears him. As other bystanders, including Mrs. Dalloway, watch the car slow to a stop, Septimus feels rooted to the ground, feeling he's blocking the way. His wife, Rhetia Warren Smith, urges him to keep moving, but Septimus uh. angrily snaps at her. She is dismayed because Septimus had said, I will kill myself to her earlier. Rhetia helps Septimus cross the street as the motor car drives toward Piccadilly. Every Londoner in the street believes that someone important is in the car. Clarissa Dalloway thinks it's the queen. She watches the car depart and notices how crowded the street has become. Some Londoners think of the dead, of the flag, of empire. As the car continues down St. James's Street, more London citizens feel patriotic and supportive of the government. Some salute, and others gather at Buckingham Palace, eager to see royalty. Another bystander feels sentimental thinking of the dead in the war. An airplane appears in the sky. Its white trail indicates that the airplane is writing letters, and the observers try to make out the word it's writing. Sitting in a park, Rhetia tries to get Septimus to look up at the airplane. Septimus thinks the plane is signaling to him. Tears spring into his eyes, and he feels overjoyed. He feels the trees around him are alive, and sparrows, as well as the park's sounds around him, blend to create an almost religious sensation. He gets up to walk, despite his wife's pleas for him to stay where he is. Rhetia is suffering, feeling alone under her husband's confusing, heartbreaking condition. Though he fought bravely in the war, he's considering suicide, which confuses and troubles her. Their doctor, Dr. Holmes, insists nothing is the matter with Septimus. She thinks about her life in Italy, comparing its vitality to England's somber solitude. Septimus continues to talk aloud to himself. He sees his commanding officer, Evans, behind the railings and calls out to him. Various bystanders watch the plane overhead, and their thoughts, their busy actions and motives on the streets, and their interpretations of what the plane is trying to spell, phase one into the other like waves of thoughts. There's an excitement, a determination, in this unifying, observable act. The airplane is shown to be spelling the first few letters of the word toffee. This panoramic scene brings all of London together and introduces the reader to several of its working class outsiders. Wolf plunges readers into the paranoia and constantly shifting images of Septimus's point of view, represented in his reaction to the symbols of the plane and trees. By juxtaposing Septimus's chaotic thoughts with the more mundane observations of Clarissa and other characters shows that reality itself is profoundly subjective. Everyone is paying attention to a different aspect of the same scene. Individuals' ideas are informed by their own ages, their countries, and histories.